Grey Cup week starting this morning here on the Rod Peterson Show. And uh, Clark tells me that we do have Keon Raymond here. We had a problem with sound, not video. Are we bringing him in on video chat from Calgary? There he is. Good morning, Keon. How are you? What's going on, Brad? How you doing this morning? Hey, really well, really well. Excited about this Grey Cup matchup. Winnipeg, Hamilton. I got to ask you what your take was on Division Final Sunday in the CFL. Man, <laughs> you talk about some weekends of football. Um, just like Hamilton, we can start there. Um, they've been a dominant team all year long. Um, I think what, uh, what Coach O has done with that group, um, just getting them to believe. Um, and I guess one message and one goal, and they've uh, they've come in and turned it around um, this year. And so it's been amazing to watch them play, um, just to be able to take them off. I know it'd be hard for Edmonton to uh, to have a shot. You know what I mean? Like no one's ever come from the Grey Cup, you know, from the crossover match. Um, but I know it'd be hard. But I know Am- Hamilton was a, a really good team. Uh, just to, in terms of that young quarterback, man, Evans. Psh- like you talking about a kid who's come on and ready to play football, he's done a tremendous job coming to play football. And um, yeah, just speaking on those riders, man, what a way to lose the game, huh? Uh, I, you know what? It, it was a good game, man. To uh, you know, I don't uh, you know, I, I was kind of questionable with those uh, those red zone calls, you know. But in the heat of those moments, you know, I know the offensive coordinator, uh, you know, he he's probably thinking, you know, a couple different things, but. Um, he, he felt like probably that was the way to go, but you know, he's a good friend of mine. I, I tip my hat to him. They fought. I mean, for them to go number one in the, uh, in the West, uh, finish first. I mean, that's all you can ask for is a shot. Keon, there's a reason, as you know, that we brought you on and we will get to that. But let me ask you this. And I've never had a chance to meet you, but, you know, my friends in Calgary say nothing but the best things about you. You won that President's Award uh, there in Calgary. Tells me what kind of guy that you are. You're like Joe Stampeter. So tell me how this Winnipeg-Hamilton matchup is playing in Calgary, do you think? What's the week going to be like for Grey Cup week? You know what? It's going to be exciting. I think um, Calgary puts on uh, a great show. Um, for the Great Cup. I just think the city is speaking about it. You know, it's a lot going on throughout the city. And just the game. You talk about two teams who hadn't won the Great Cup. Uh, was it last 1990 and 1999? And so these are probably, the, since I've played in the league, you know, these teams, you know, had, you know, they've been there, but hadn't got a chance to hoist um, the cup up. And so for an exciting matchup like this, I think the city's going to be um, excited about, it, especially uh, with Winnipeg coming into town. Um, they're not being so far away. I know it probably. I know a lot of Ryder fans are hoping they get in to come in a little closer to uh to Cowtown. Um, but for the most part, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a good matchup. Uh, you talking about you got really good defenses. Uh, I got a chance to watch Winnipeg's defense up close against Calgary in that West semifinal, and just kind of what they uh, did to Calgary's offense, kind of hold bow. Um, to his lowest um, throwing um, yards and percentage, you know, as a starting quarterback, uh, you know, that was that was impressive. So I tip my hat to Richie Hall. But, you know, you see Hamilton's defense and their explosive offense as well. So you're talking about this, this is going to be an exciting Grey Cup game to watch. And, you know, hopefully the uh, the temperature uh, stays well here in Calgary and uh, we'll see kind of how it uh, how it goes. You know, it changes here. It's fickled in Calgary a bit. You know, you mentioned Ryder fans being upset and they are. But the Calgary people, after the Stamps lost to the Bombers, like they couldn't even, they didn't even want to talk about the loss to the Bombers because they're so not used to losing on the way to the Grey Cup. Uh, What happened? Have you, you know, have you dissected why they're not in this Grey Cup? Yeah, you know what I I, I did? Like, you know, Calgary's always been a team, even when I played, a team of resilience and just learning, you know, knowing how to make plays one at a time um, to make plays, you know, and it just, they didn't have that, you know, um, that playmaker. I don't want to say they needed one of those Pat and Keon pick sixes to change the game around, <laughs> but, they, but they needed some type of spark, you know, and I think just a little bit more help from that defensive side um, to generate some type of points or something like that. This kind of helps spur the offense, you know. They say defense win championships, and I think that's the, 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 the biggest thing, and, and I think they were always in the game, and it just it was, you can tell they're a young team when that adversity started to hit um, a little bit, you know what I mean? There needed to be some type of voice on the sideline that, you know, that that never fight, that never died, that never quit attitude, you know. And I just I mean it didn't seem like it was it was there, you know what I mean? And I think they have it, you know what I mean, but they have it there, but I think it's just been a young 
a, a young team, you know what I mean? And those guys are learning to understand, like, you know, some of these guys, they've been to – some of these guys have been to three great cups in a row. And, you know, I know my first year in 2008 we came, you think it's easy. You know what I mean? You get there three years in a row, it's like, oh, man, we, you know, we cakewalked through here. But, um, you know, it's hard, man. It's it's a lot of good players in this league, and it's hard to get back, you know. So I think they have a long off season to, uh, you know, to kind of think things over and kind of see what they need to improve on. I think you're right. One of the analysis that I, one of the guys told me was they left it into the fourth quarter so many times that they did it one time too many, and they couldn't turn it on against a Winnipeg team that wasn't going to be denied. Now, Keon, people don't win the president's ring uh, without impacting the community, impacting lives. These are the kind of guys that win these awards, and this is what you're doing. I understand there was going to be an announcement Saturday night at Grey Cup, or are we making the announcement today? Tell our viewers what you got going on with your wife, Bianca. Yeah. Yeah, so me and my wife, man, it's a, it's a pleasure. We we decided to stay in Calgary, you know, after the playing career, and um, we've raised our kids here. You know, we've been living here since uh, 2010, and um, me and my wife, you know, after uh, me playing, we decided to uh, start a youth um, sports organization called K25 Sports. And um, so this weekend with the Great Cup festivities coming to Calgary, um, we've uh, we've uh, we're hosting the uh, Keon Raymond kind of All Star um, weekend and events. We're doing a football camp the Saturday morning um, at nine uh, nine thirty uh, at the uh, Stampede grounds, uh, and we're uh, we're topping it off with a uh, a huge celebrity basketball game. You know, um, I put it to a bunch of guys, and we're raising money for our seven on seven travel team, and that's a uh, that's a team, uh, a bunch of Canadian kids, high school kids um, from grades seven and eight, nine, 10, and 11 and 12. And I take these kids down to the U.S. and we play seven on seven football. And it works on skill development for these kids. You know, I, I'm such a big fan of football. And uh, and I want these kids, Canadian kids up here to know that they can compete with the kids down south. You know, they, they put shoes on just like they do. So uh, we're hosting a, a big char- charity celebrity basketball game. Um, I got guys coming in from all over, um, some alumni guys playing. I got some active guys coming out to play. Um, it's what's going to be a fun atmosphere. Just, you know, we're raising money. Um, we're going to have fun. Some, you know, it's probably going to be, it's going to be the biggest thing happening Saturday night. You know, I know they got some concerts going on, but ain't nothing going to be bigger than what we got going. We got a couple of celebrity judges coming in. Um, Henry Burris is going to come judge our dunk contest at halftime. So um, it's going to be fun. Where for fans that are coming and they want to be a part of this, where can they find it? Do they need to buy tickets? So what's you know where and when and all that stuff? How do they get in? Yeah, so what we do is we got uh, our tickets. We're selling tickets on Eventbrite. Um, so you just search up Keon Raymond Celebrity Basketball Classic and the uh, the tickets on Eventbrite. Uh, and you know we're holding it at Crescent Heights. And if anybody been to uh, to Calgary, Crescent Heights High School is probably one of the the prettiest stadiums, uh, gyms um, in the city. It's the second oldest gym. Um, in the city, and it's a it's a great um, facility um, for us to uh, um, to host this event at. Um, and so we got we got a lot of sponsors coming in as well too. Um, one of them was helping us out, a, a big buddy of mine, um, Jack Fulton with Life Choice Dynamics. So they're donating um, ten tickets for kids up front. Um, for a whole great cup package. So we got tickets for those kids aside for them to get an opportunity to meet a lot of the players um, after the game as well. Um, and my uh, my buddy from Speedy Apollo, they've uh, they've donated tickets for kids um, as well. Uh, and uh, and Big Chief, you know, so uh, Beef Jerky, they're coming out and they're helping out. So all our jerky sales are going back to our program um, for our kids to be able to uh, lower our costs for uh, taking kids down to uh, Las Vegas. Um, in um, in February to uh, to compete. So um, our biggest thing, especially about the the the, uh, the seven on seven rod, and I appreciate it. Is I mean, we take these kids down and, and we we tour them around the colleges um, in the U.S. and they get an opportunity to just kind of see um, you know a different side of things. You know, a lot of these kids watch the college football um, on the U.S. Georgia and Auburn was the big game. I was rooting for Georgia this weekend anyway. Go dogs. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but but a lot of these kids, you know, I mean, especially with the immersions of Hubbard uh, down south, you know what I mean? The, the Canadian ho- Heisman hopeful, you know, and I tell a lot of these kids up there that, that could be you, you know, and so it's just putting the work in. And so it's exciting, man. I'm excited about the weekend, man. It seems like it's a lot of work, um, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be exciting. Keon, I appreciate this. Uh, enjoy the week for all that it is. You know how great they are. Thanks for coming on and promoting it, and good luck with it. I appreciate it. I can't wait till the day that we shake hands and meet face-to-face, but your reputation certainly precedes you, and it's a great one. 
Well, I appreciate it so much, right? I know you'll be down here, right? Not coming. Only if the riders were in. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I'm going to tell you, man, I'm a big fan of your show. I love the work that you do, man. And whatever I can do to come on, please uh, don't be this the last time I have me on. Oh, not a chance. All right. Got that, okay. Clark? Keon's a regular. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Keon. Have a great week. Thanks so much, Rod. I appreciate it. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.